We appreciate your time. I am Pius Kujo Baka. And looking at our stories, financial economist Professor Lord Mensah is warning of serious implications for Ghana's treasury market if the Supreme Court upholds the application filed by a private legal practitioner to stop the government from issuing treasury bills. According to Professor Mensah, the development will send a negative signal to the market which will affect investor confidence. Already, the Bank of Ghana has carried out today's Treasury bills auction after it received some significant requests from commercial banks for today's activity despite an application filed at the Supreme Court. Professor Lord Mensah spoke earlier on the market, please. If you look at the schedule that Bank of Ghana came out with in terms of issuing of Treasury bills, you realize that this government has been um, going against those schedules and issuing you know, treasury bills off schedule. And from where I see, I think the Bank of Ghana acting as, I mean, an intermediary between investors and then, you know, government that have prompted the government to do the right thing. And, you know, when it happens like that, it, it brings down investor, you know, confidence because, you know, the investor does not know what is likely to happen. And we may have to appreciate that you know, law, finance, and then, you know, economics move hand in hand. I mean, where the laws don't work, I mean, obviously, you, you, you seem to have, you know, regulatory problems here and there. And so, um, it can have impact on you know, further issues when it comes to um, the treasury bills. The Deputy Finance Minister, Dr. Stephen Amwa, says government is committed to supporting entrepreneurship growth by creating a conducive environment to attract the needed investment. Speaking in an interview with Joy Business at the annual regional network conference for enterprise development and employment promotion in Accra, Dr. Amwa emphasized on effective stakeholder collaboration to support SME development. More in this report. The annual regional network conference for enterprise development and employment promotion is Accra's inaugural event focused on enterprise development and job creation. Since January 2023, the program has engaged many stakeholders across all operational regions, highlighting a widespread consensus on the importance of enterprise development and employment promotion. Deputy Minister of Finance, Dr. Stephen Amo emphasized the critical need for entrepreneurship development in Ghana. Um, entrepreneurship is the way to go today all over the world because even the normal corporate job space is congested all over the world so you realize that the giant economies in the world are now adhering to or giving precedence to entrepreneurship and so activities such as prevailing today must be taken very serious and critical and I was also encouraging Ghanaian putting hope back in them that the economy has started doing well. COVID, post-COVID, we grew, we are growing about 0 0.4. Inflation went to about 54.1. But now we are growing over 5%. Inflation has come as low as about 20%. And a lot of good things are happening. And almost all the indicative targets set between us and the IMF, we have outperformed a lot of them and most of them. So the economy is now doing very well. GIZ Country Director Dr. Dirk Adman called for collaboration among stakeholders. Better collaboration and efficient use of available funds, whether from development partners or government sources, can enhance services for SMEs and contribute significantly to economic growth and job creation. The union of service providers has immense potential to drive positive change. By fostering collaboration, knowledge sharing, and collective action, we can build a support network that transform enterprises development, enterprise development across Ghana. The annual regional network conference for enterprise development and employment promotion was organized by GIZ together with the European Union, the Ghana Hubs Network and the Greater Accra Regional Coordinating Council. In a groundbreaking convergence of leaders across industries, the Strategic ESG and Sustainability Impact Summit has kicked off with an ambitious agenda to drive the business world towards a sustainable net zero future. Helen Nakayayi has more. This year's Strategic ESG and Sustainability Summit aims to facilitate a paradigm shift in how businesses operate, emphasizing sustainability, 
ESG excellence, and net zero emissions. Nana Kojo Edu Boatin, Sales and Marketing Director at EWIA Green Investments West Africa Limited, highlighted the need for government to focus on strategic measures to ensure that businesses and organizations comply with net zero sustainability goals. This to a time where foreigners wouldn't want to come into this, should I say hazardous environment again, because the pollution is so high when you come in and you move, you get sick. So nobody would want to come in an environment where I come in and I get sick. Do you get me? So it's up to the government to take care of this, to initiate like what you just said, something or some kind of taxes that if an environment or an industry that manufactures and pollutes so much, if you don't go renewable, this is how much I charge you on electricity or something, then everyone will sit up. Do you understand? In that sense, then they will begin to chase out to, okay, so where are the financiers that would help me finance my renewable? Dr. Timothy Sande Aluko, General Manager of ESG and Impact, urged businesses to embrace sustainability and net zero emissions. It helps to prove to the world that you are a, a responsible entity and it also attracts investors to you. And it helps you to leave the world better than you met it pre and post your operations. And those that are still on the fence, I'm pretty sure that everybody will soon come on board considering the new reporting standards and the expectations of the global world and the need to you know, have your reduction strategy and prove again to the world that you are a socially responsible entity. So I want to encourage everybody to begin to align with uh, sustainability in all their product chains, including their value and supply chain. As the summit progresses, it will underscore that achieving net zero is not only a regulatory requirement, but also a competitive advantage and a moral imperative in today's business landscape. A landmark publication on income taxation in Ghana has been officially launched, promising to demystify the intricacies of Ghana's tax laws for citizens, students, policymakers and professionals alike. The book authored by lawyer Lawrence Huchinyonyami says um, it aims to provide a comprehensive guide to the income tax system here in Ghana. The launch of the scope and coverage of income taxation in Ghana is expected to impact on public understanding and compliance with Ghana's income tax regulations. Speaking at the event, the author, Lawrence Huchonyami Esquire, highlighted the challenges faced by many Ghanaians in navigating the country's tax system and expressed hope that the book will make tax knowledge more accessible. The challenge we have in this country is tax um, ignorance. When you are ignorant, there's a saying that ignorance of the law is no excuse. And most people in this country don't have basic knowledge about our tax laws and that is the challenge they don't have basic knowledge about the vat act the income tax act the excise act the C and then our, all our laws and because of that they operate in ignorance when you operate in ignorance certain incomes that you don't disclose you end up disclosing it certain incomes that you have to disclose you don't disclose all your expenses, you don't capture them properly. So this book is to educate all our taxpayers. It will give them what we call tax literacy. He added that the book also seeks to provide basic understanding of the application of tax laws. All businesses, all employees, you need to know the reliefs that you are entitled to, the concessions that you are entitled to, the exemptions, the various incomes that are exempted from tax. You need a book that will guide you in your calculation of your employment income or your investment income or your business income. The book is expected to serve as an essential resource, not only for individuals and businesses seeking to better understand their tax obligations, but also for academic institutions. Helen Nakai Ayish reports read to you. On to one of our lead stories, the British High Commissioner to Ghana, Harriet Thompson, is calling for strong partnerships to improve education across the country. This, she explains, will help Ghana reduce the unemployment menace. She was speaking at an event organized by Imperial Global College. At the event, Imperial College London says it is committed to developing equitable partnership across Africa and beyond, harnessing the power of research, entrepreneurship and collaboration to address global challenges. What we're trying to do is build on an established track record of collaboration, 
but now to build in real scale. And that, that often is the, is the difference between success and failure when it comes to cracking climate change or cracking food security or water security or cracking antimicrobial resistance. So just between Imperial and our Ghanaian colleagues and other West African institutions, I think we have an opportunity to, to, to create real scale. But if you take the Schmidt AI Fellows Program, for example, that doesn't just see us working together, uh, it sees us working collaboratively with also colleagues in India, in, in Malaysia uh, and other parts of the world. British High Commissioner to Ghana, Harriet Thompson, stressed the need to empower young innovators, create sustainable solutions and drive forward the next wave of scientific and technological breakthroughs. I'm delighted and it is a sound decision. Imperial College has got well-established partnerships right here with the University of Ghana, with KNUST, with the University of Cape Coast. Those partnerships cover areas ranging from medical diagnostics and vaccine research, to AI and data science, to climate science and sustainable cities, to entrepreneurship. The establishment of an imperial global hub here in Ghana is a celebration of the incredible talent and the potential of this great country. Dean of the Faculty of Accounting and Finance at UPSC, Professor Isaac Buidi, has emphasized the need for increased collaborations between universities and corporate institutions. He highlighted that such partnerships are crucial in enhancing the skills of students, building networks, and achieving career stability. Professor Buidi made this known at a forum organized by KPMG to mark International Accounting Day at the University of Professional Studies. To commemorate the 2024 International Accounting Day, KPMG, in partnership with the University of Professional Studies, Accra, organized a sensitization forum. The initiative is part of KPMG's corporate social responsibility aimed to enlighten students on current trends in the accounting profession. In an interview with Joy Business, Professor Isaac Boedi, Dean of UPSA's Faculty of Accounting and Finance, emphasized the need for corporate collaborations to bridge the gap between industry and academia. We are in a world that um, it is a usual accounting in terms of reporting and measuring numbers or interpreting numbers and figures. But it's also about uh, reporting uh, in terms of uh, carbon footprint of um, organizations. And it's on a platform uh, for our students to learn what is happening globally. Uh, there's a push for demand for uh, sustainability accounting or practices. And that is what our students have been taught today. Rindo Fano, Senior Tax Consultant, Accounting Advisory Services at KPMG, described KPMG as an organization committed to excellence, helping students develop their skills through the program. Um, what we do is because we, we are into practice and we practice, we give students a platform. So when you join us, we are uh, an organization for excellence. We say we never stop learning and improving. So as we work, we have the practical skills. Your student, you come in, you join us. We give you that platform to develop or to hone your skills. So what you have learned in school, we are giving you the opportunity to make that a reality, to practice that. And you are not doing that alone. You have seasoned professionals within KPMG that you are working with who helps you in every journey. Joy Ankara, a student at the university, testified to the program's immense benefits, sharing her positive experience. This program that was held has actually helped me. It has given me insights on the new things that are being employed in the whole accounting sector with all this sustainability and then ESGs. So I've come to realize that apart from just accounting in particular, I am, we are all more open to other careers through the introduction of the ESG. Now there are calls for government and other key stakeholders to aid in improving its transition from education to employment. Director for the INP Education to Employment Program said this is pertinent to strengthen the resilience of the educational sector. She spoke to Joy Business at a re-institution workshop. For many years now, 
Vestiges and Partners through Edge Education and Employment Program has been supporting educative entrepreneurs committed to the continent youth. The restitution workshop of the INP Education to Employment Program, direct at INP Education to Employment, Kumba Anuma, stressed the need to strengthen business network and discover committed players within the space. We have supported uh, 10 companies in the educational uh, ecosystem. We have supported technical and vocational uh, providers. We have also supported uh, higher education and uh, also a Ghanaian publisher. The first Ghanaian publisher that uh, is operating here in, in Ghana, well, because of uh, a few considerations. Uh, INP is a private equity fund that usually supports entrepreneurs uh, in the sub Saharan Africa, private entrepreneurs. And when it comes to education, we know that the government are doing a lot to help uh, accessing education for the young people, especially the girls. But there's still a gap uh, regarding the funding of education, the funding of uh, of uh, private education. An entrepreneur also shared his thoughts on the initiative. Uh, they gave a lot of training to both the students and then the team members and every worker at Rio's. We have also through this program been able to launch um, the first fashion app that um, takes you from a complete beginner to a pro when it comes to sewing. So currently when you go to the Google Play Store and then Apple Store, you can just type so skills. The INP Education to Employment Program is a collaborative initiative with the MasterCard Foundation and the government of Monaco's Development Corporation Policy, which was launched to enhance youth access to better higher education training in order to bridge the training employment gap in Africa. This is still business life. We have more stories for you after this break. Welcome back to Business Life. A new modern market complex constructed to boost economic activities in the Techima metropolis has been opened. The project, which forms part of the Ghana Secondary City Support Program, will, among other things, help enhance local development. This, according to the Minister for Local Government and Rural Development and MP for Techiman South, Martin A.J. Minister Corsa, will contribute to the growth of the Techiman Central Market, which is the largest food crop market in the West African sub-region. And now Sabit has more. With a total investment of 245 million US dollars, the Ghana Secondary City Support Program under the Urban Development Grant was set to revolutionize urban infrastructure and management capacities in some selected municipalities across the country. Here in the Tishman municipality of the Bunis region, the Nanabuna market, which comprises of a 68 number market stalls, an administration block, a meat shop, a police post, and a health post is one of many projects within the Tichman Enclave. Minister for Local Government and Rural Development and Member of Parliament for Tichman South constituency Martin J. Mensa Corsa at a brief ceremony to commission the fully completed project underscored the relevance of the new market complex to the Tichman municipality, which has the largest food crop market in the West African sub region. Government realizing the need to provide critical infrastructure for the growing population decided to enter an agreement with the World Bank under the caption Ghana Secondary City Support Program. It initially began in 2019 with multiple facilities, ranging from banks to clinic to police station and so on. There's a fire tender and everything. I mean, the overall plan is to try and upgrade the Tichiman market itself. Mr. Jamin Sakosa mentioned some key projects provided by government within the past few years, and this includes some major road projects recently constructed within the area. In Tichiman, a number of facilities have been provided. Critical among them has been the roads. The roads in Tichiman have seen a major facelift. And so if you go to areas like Abani, if you go to areas like Ahimfi, if you come to Jusiasi, here in Jumor, if you go to um, Brigade, this has provided all the, 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 the roads that we need. Mayor of the Tichima Metropolitan Assembly, Benjamin Yaojako, on his part, highlighted some crucial benefits the Assembly is said to gain from the new market and admonished users of the project to work towards keeping it in good shape. Tichima is a commercial center. 
we have one of the largest markets in the country. And this market, you see, serves as a complementary market to the main market. And my expectation is that the traders, uh, both buyers and sellers, should really keep this facility uh, in a very decent level. The management of the facility must be key to the assembly. The technical officers, the management committee that we will empower to manage this market must take it very serious. Chairman of the occasion and acting president of the Techiman Traditional Council, Nana Techi Free, lauded the member of parliament for the numerous developmental projects and appealed to the minister to work towards the provision of an airport within the area to aid trading activities. <laughs> So what that the day is from eight to eight, and the airport. We need so much money here. I'm an abroso. Then say the money we will be awarded in what that? So the best thing to keep in mind, we be able to buy more pesos. Enter the airport. They offer you that we from more or we are more than talent. Reporting for Joy News, Alas Sabit, Tichiman. From one market to the other as part of efforts aimed at improving commercial activities in the Nkuranza municipality of the Bunu East region, government under the Ghana Secondary City Support Program has constructed a new state-of-the-art market complex for the people in the area. But the facility, according to the Minister for Local Government and Rural Development, Martin Eji Mensakosa, well, is aimed at boosting the local economy and providing essential services to market users. And that's a bit once more. Amidst drumming and dancing, these traders, most of whom are women, couldn't hide their excitement at a newly constructed market edifice which aims at helping boost trading activities across the Nkranza municipality. <laughs> I am very excited because we now have a befitting place to trade and when it's raining, we will have our own shares to trade. So we are thankful to the woman for the gesture. This will be of help to all, both the youth and the elderly. The market will be of massive help to the growth of the Nkranza township and both the youth and the aged will be financially stable. I'm a youth. These traders say trading activities within the market. Thanks so much for watching Business Life for today. I am Pius Kojo Baka. Next is Beyond the Numbers. Great topic we are discussing this very moment. Do stick and stay with Joy News. We are your home of independent, fearless, and credible journalism.